We are several miles east of River Falls, an area that's called Clay Corners. There's a good reason for this name, because the soil here is very heavy and clay rich. Soil development usually represents the nature of the underlying rock. And in this region, the bedrock that's being weathered is called the Cora Formation, which contains a lot of the rock called shale, which is nothing more than compacted or consolidated clay. The decora doesn't outcrop very well around here, but it does show up in these low road cuts. This is a very typical exposure, and it's really not very impressive, even to a geologist like myself. But if you dig around in this, you'll find that the soil is very heavy, clay-rich, very different from uh, most of the soil around here, and this is a product of weathering of the shale. The shale is essentially a hardened mud that existed in uh, a shallow sea that was here about 450 million years ago. Interlayered with the shale, we find these more resistant rock units, and these are a type of limestone. You can get a better impression of the decora formation if you see it in fresh excavations, such as this house foundation. The dark gray material is the shale. The small resistant ledges you see are the limestone beds. The limestone beds are loaded with fossils. They contain evidence of the biological diversity that existed in this sea, which covered a lot of the Midwest about 450 million years ago. We'll take a closer look at some of the more typical fossils in this rock back in the lab. Here's a nice little fossil slab from the decor formation. It's been uh, cleaned up a little bit, but more or less just with soap and water and a nice uh, toothbrush to scrub out the mud. You can see a variety of fossils in this rock. Uh, this little guy right here, this is a shellfish, otherwise known as a brachiopod. Brachiopods are not uncommon in the decor formation. They are actually much more common down on the, the formation just below this, the platfill formation. One of the most characteristic fossils you see here are these long things that look like sticks. They really aren't sticks at all. They're remains of a little animal colonies. They're called bryozoa. And the bryozoan were uh, little tiny animals that uh, had a lifestyle rather similar to coral. Uh, they would build these little reef-like structures and each one of these little pores here had a tiny animal growing in it. In a way, you can look at these as, as little uh, prehistoric high-rise apartment buildings, uh, each one with its own little resonance. Uh, sometimes down here, you can see these little round things, and uh, I've got another sample here which I'll show you. Here we have a close-up of some of these little round fossils that, in a way, resemble little Cheerios. Uh, these are the remains of a stem of an animal called a sea lily. Sea lilies grew on the seafloor. They uh, fed on uh, organisms that they would trap as they swam by, but they did look an awful lot like a plant. Uh, their stems were composed of these round objects, and when the animal died, the stems fell apart, scattering these across the seafloor. There are people who take these when they weather out and string them together to make uh, little beads or other ornaments out of them. Another fossil you can sometimes find in the decora formation are these long uh, spiral-shaped organisms. These are gastropods, or in more common parlance, these are snails. So when you put this all together with the snails, the brachiopods, the crinoids, or sea lilies, and the bryozoa, you have a fairly complete picture of the complex paleoecology that existed when the uh, decora formation was being deposited. This painting by Zednik Burian illustrates how the seafloor may have looked around River Falls when the limestone beds were being deposited. Notice particularly the fields of sea lilies in the background. The sea would have been much muddier during those intervals when the shale was being accumulated. Stream valleys draining the uplands in our areas can be great places to look for fossils. The more slabby limestone of the decor formation often is worked loose by the process of erosion, and then rainwater and frost action will carry these slabs down, downhill where they accumulate in the floors of the little ravines in our area. If you do go out fossil hunting, remember, don't go into anybody's property look for fossils without the property owner's knowledge or permission. The heavy clay-rich soil developed on a decor formation has an effect on the land use in an area. Houses built on a decor formation can have some problems with slope stability or with drainage, and you may find a difficult uh, time finding material that will perk appropriately for a septic system. Another use for land underlain by the decor formation is a wildlife habitat, and that's what this acreage is used for in this plot that's maintained by the DNR and Pheasants Forever. The type of soil also obviously affects what type of crops are best grown in an area. 
Historically, this particular region was used to grudgingly grow corn and soybeans. It drained very slowly and thus it was very hard for the farmer to get in very early in the spring to, uh, to get the crops in. Now it's being developed more as a tree farm with some water tolerant red maples being uh, established in it. However, behind me in the spruce trees back there, we have a very different type of soil and a very different type of parent material. So go have a look at it. In addition to the sandier soil in this area, you also have some large rocks pop up every now and then. This isn't shale, it isn't limestone, it's a chunk of granite that's nearly completely buried in this roadway here. Now this type of rock isn't from around here. It's more typical of the terrain more to the north and to the west of us than is anything around the River Falls area. So how did a rock of this size get in here? Here are a few more odd rocks picked up from a nearby field. So how did these rocks get here? They're clearly not from around our local area, and the answer is they were brought in by the glaciers. Us geologists will call these rocks glacial erratics, and they give evidence as to the extent and power of the glacial ice that once covered this region. The glaciers also eroded away a lot of the decora formation, and we're actually lucky to have any of it still left in this area. That's the main reason why its distribution is so patchy in our region. Glacial erratics can be major hassles in clearing and maintaining fields, as you can see here in this field near New Richmond. This is a modern glacier on Baffin Island in Canada. Uh, we can get a good idea of how glaciers can transport big rocks a long ways and then deposit them as the ice melts. The last glaciers left our region about 15,000 years ago, but they have been coming and going off and on for the last two million years. We'll talk about the effects that these glaciers have had on the landscape around River Falls and Hudson in the next tape.